Hello. So when I left you, we had a bunch of texts here, and I've just changed them over into buttons and given them a basic layout. Uh, that was something I didn't feel I needed to show you. Um, but these buttons don't understand that they exist or do anything or anything like that. We need to make something that allows us to create inventory items. We need to have, you know, potions and swords and helmets and tree branches and whatever else we happen to need to pick up. And that means we need to have an inventory item script, a class for an inventory item. The problem is that the urge is to create that as a mono behavior and attach it to an item and have that item be in world and that's just not the right way to do it. So today I'm going to teach you about the secret mysteries of scriptable objects and I've created a scriptable objects directory and we're going to create a new class and we're going to call this inventory item spell it right there we are so when you open up this you can see that it's a mono behavior by default almost everything is a mono behavior and these are the things that can be attached to game objects they get stuck into the game world and they have a position and they get updated every frame and all that stuff that's not what we're going to be doing we're going to be using a scriptable object scriptable object is uh, is the cousin of the mono behavior it has all of the same basic functionality except for it doesn't actually exist in the scene it only exists in the project not in the scene now this is a little bit of something that can take a moment to wrap your head around if you've gotten into the unity in, into the unity mindset of everything existing in the scene because these do not exist in the scene and they will never exist in the scene this has a lot of disadvantages you can't use events very easily there's a limited number of things you can do with it in terms of coroutines but it has a lot of advantages as well. You don't create duplicates of it. If you change it once, you change it everywhere. If you change it in play mode, that change gets saved. So there's a lot of advantages, and I'll have a link down below if you want to learn more about scriptable objects. There's some really nice tutorials, uh, and I can, I can link you to them. But we're going to go ahead and create one right now. And so we're going to make this an inventory item, and for that we're going to need a sprite for our thumbnail. We're going to need a uh, stackable, and we're going to need how many things are stacked. Pretty easy, right? So this is a very, very straightforward inventory item. It's got a name because all scriptable objects have names, and other than that, it's only got a couple of little details, and we'll deal with uh, more, more in-depth stuff later. So if we go back over here, and we click on it, you can see that you can see the script, but there's no like checkboxes or anything, and that you can't really do anything over here. That's because this is a class. It's not an instance. And in order to get an instance of this class, we actually need to tell Unity how to do it. This is uh, the only major flaw with scriptable objects. That should really be something where I can just right-click and say, create instance, but there isn't, I'm afraid. Uh, what we need to do is we need to actually add the ability to create an instance down here. So in order to do that, we're going to need to create another script. And this is a script you're almost never going to use. In fact, you can actually delete it after you've created one instance, because you can just duplicate instances. So we're going to call it the inventory item creator. And we're going to open that up. So the inventory item creator is not quite the same as uh, everything else that we've been doing so far. Uh, first off, it's not a mono behavior. It's also really nothing. Uh, what we need to do is we need to have a function to create our system. So public static void create inventory item. Now there are a few ways to do this and I've got it open in the other window. I'm using the more advanced way because it's not actually any more advanced, it's just more undocumented. Uh, if you're coming along with Unity 5, this method probably won't work. I haven't tested it, but Unity 5 probably has a different method of handling this, uh, but that's okay. What we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create an asset uh, of that type. So we need inventory item item equals, now you can't say new inventory item, well I mean you can but it won't work right, instead you need to do a scriptable object dot instantiate and that's just like you would instantiate a game object, you don't say new transform that doesn't work, but that's fine, this will work, all we have to do is specify what it is and it is an inventory item so this will create an inventory item for us, but it hasn't saved that inventory item, it's just an empty inventory item that's floating around in memory what we need to do is we need to permanently save it into our assets directory. 
Now you could do that using the assets database, but the easier way to do it is to uh, make sure you have the right namespaces. And then just use the project window util. Yeah, I'm sure you've used this lots, right? Very common th thing to use. <laughs> this is basically undocumented, but it's very worthwhile. Now we can go ahead and name it whatever we want, put it wherever we want. Uh, we're just going to call this new um, inventory item. And you have to say .asset because that's the, the file ending that it uses. Now this is all well and good, but how do we trigger this? We add it as a menu item. Like so. Now I'm not entirely sure whether or not this has to be static, uh, the class itself. Um, I don't think it, I, I think it probably would be best if it was. So let's go ahead and save this and go over here and test it. So you can see we got some errors. No overload function for instantiate takes zero arguments. Really? Um, I tested this before and I thought it did take zero arguments. Oh, it's actually create instance. There we are. Sorry about that. Wrong word. I got used to game objects. Alright, so here in our scriptable objects directory we can right click create inventory item. Pretty easy, right? Let's make this gold. So there are a lot of um, things we can do now. We can just continue to right click create inventory item all day and all night or we can just select a golden hit control D. Uh, and I think that most of our inventory items are going to be created that way. So uh, once you've created your very first one it's pretty easy to do everything without using that menu interface uh, if that menu interface bothers you. So that's why I think there should just be a right click create instance option. And maybe there will be eventually, who knows. So this now is a, a particular inventory item. And we want it to be stackable, obviously. Uh, now numstacked, I put that in because I wasn't thinking. <laughs> uh, numstacked will not, in fact, be something we care about. Because this is a universal inventory item. It is uh, shared between everything that has that inventory type. So if we specified a number stacked here, then what we would have is, say we picked up two swords. Uh, it would say number stacked two. We picked up the next sword. It would be a stack of two swords, and then we'd have a number stacked four. Pick up the next sword. A stack of four swords. We have a number stacked eight, uh, and that would obviously be not not great. The only sprite I have is a placeholder sprite. There we go. Um, and uh, now what we need to do? How many times have we? Seven and a half, eight minutes. Uh, now what we would like to do is we would like to make these reflect an inventory item, and that means that we need a new script. So over here in scripts. We've got an inventory and an inventory item display. I created this inventory item display off screen. It's empty, um, and I just forgot to delete it. But basically, this inventory item has an inventory item display. Come on, you can be added somewhere there. Uh, and when we go into this, let's go ahead and delete the rest of these. When we go into the inventory item display, the thing we want to have a link to is an inventory item. We're also going to need to have a link to the various pieces that we're going to be modifying. There we go. So we're going to need to have a public text, name text, num text, and a public, uh, what is it, an image, uh, a thumbnail, and public int num stacked. Pretty straightforward, right? So uh, we don't need the start or the update. But we do need it so that uh, we do need to have a start just for one thing. Just for now, we want to say if item does not equal null, then we want to trigger it. So set doesn't exist yet. A setup is probably better, but we'll want to set that up. So now I have a public void setup inventory item item, and we say item equals item, except for of course we want to say this dot item equals item. So that's just saying, well, the item that we're getting past, make it our actual item. Now, in the terms of, of what's happening here in start, that doesn't actually change anything, but most of these will not happen at start. Most of them will be spawned by us collecting something, and therefore we're not going to have this, uh, this start get triggered. The start getting triggered is just for now. 
and we say name text uh, equals and numstack should be one obviously we say name text equals uh, name text dot text equals item dot name uh, num text dot text equals uh, numstack but we actually only want to do that if it's more than one if numstack is greater than one else And of course, thumbnail dot sprite equals item dot thumbnail. So that should allow us to set things up as gold. So here in our first button, which says button one, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to drop. Oh, we have some kind of bug here. Oh yeah, of course. Um, so what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to specify all of those things. So our name text our number text, our thumbnail, and, of course, our gold. And let's go ahead and make our num stack into seven. So that means we'll start with seven gold, and let's hit play. Seven gold. All right, so that's the basic idea. And you will find that creating inventory items like this is so much easier than creating inventory items using game objects. And it's also a lot more portable. So uh, all in all, this is je just way above and beyond. It, it, it is far better. Use this method. Uh, get used to using scriptable objects if you're building an RPG because they are very useful. Um, and they're almost undocumented, so I'm going to walk you through them piece by piece. If you want to know more right now from people who have a lot more uh, uh, skill at them than I do, there will be at least one tutorial in the... Uh, menu below. Go ahead and look in the video in video info, and you'll find a couple of tutorials.